Hey, Josh Tig, Running T Farms, uh, morning cattle move here. Just wanted to uh, take a second here and, and talk just a little bit more about adapted genetics. Uh, things that we're noticing that we think are just really paramount. So I came out here yesterday evening and uh, set up the poly wire lifter for the last move because we had uh, something we wanted to do as a family. And it was, uh, it was getting warm. It was up close to 80 degrees, which I say just warm. So we, I look back, I have a weather station here on the farm. When I got here this morning, I'm gonna walk over and take a look at something here in a second. We started out the day at 54 degrees yesterday morning and we got to a high of 83. Uh, 83 is not all that hot. The humidity uh, was not high, the heat index couldn't have been more than a degree or two above the actual temperature so it took till 1:30, uh just after after lunch there before we ever got to 80 degrees and then uh, we stayed above 80 degrees with a high of 83 for four hours so that's that's not a hot day in north carolina during the summer which we're, we're heading into fall it did get a few degrees warmer than what they had forecast. They were they were forecasting like 78 or something. So I had these cattle in a break with with no access to shade, which shouldn't shouldn't be a big deal at 80 degrees. So uh, when I got here this morning, I'm going to walk over. But just so happens, this is the type of adapted animal I'm talking about. So this is one of our Mashona Angus Cross heifers. If you'll see, she's just doing extremely well uh grazing non-selectively here's another one right beside her very sleek hair coat grazing non-selectively look at the fat deposition around their tail heads these are our two-year-old uh bred heifers uh they're they'll be bred to calve in may of next year they're they're just uh we just finishing up the breeding season but i want you to look at the fat deposition around here they're grazing fescue non-selectively uh no parasite control no fly control uh we've discontinued that a few years ago so no dewormers no fly control and you can tell by looking at those cattle that they are just thriving in this environment. And then I would, I would ask you to take a look at uh, this animal here, which is, she's a uh, couple years, let's see, here's a, here is a two-year-old straight Angus bred uh, heifer. And you can see that uh, she's just overall appearance is not as well. Uh, she's in the same same uh, grazing regime, same herd. They're all grazing the same stuff, same management. Uh, no difference except the genetic package. Uh, and why is that important? So, so yesterday, 80 degrees. When I was out here about, uh, I was out here about 2:30, so it had gotten up above 80 degrees, and we had uh, some cows that were already gathered over here around the water uh showing signs of heat stress so i i knew that it was not going to be too hot for too long these cows were not in any danger of uh, uh succumbing to heat by any means but i just want to show you what they can do and just so so this wasn't like this when i was here at uh around 2 30 yesterday but we had our water tank set right here you can see where I had the uh, mats. The water tank was right here. This morning I moved it down there. We set a back fence. But in less than, uh, you know, probably three hours or so, they've just stood around, heat stressed, urinated, pooped, stomped, wallered. You can see right there where one's laid down uh, due to heat stress. So this is with a high of 83 degrees and low humidity. Now they are grazing Kentucky 31 fescue, but uh, when I was out here, I, I should have took a little video, but I didn't think about it. None of our Mashona influence calves were over here in this, in this mess. It was all our straight bred British cattle. And, and so 
you know, which animal do you think is going to give the best production in our environment uh, if they can't even, uh, we're exhibiting signs of heat stress with uh, 83 degrees and low humidity when, you know, generally in our summers, we're, we're going to be triple digit heat index for most of July and August, uh, you know, low to high 90s sometimes we get into the triple digits actual temperature but our heat because we have such high humidity our heat index is is a triple digits for a good 60 75 days probably every year very close to that i'm, I'm just guessing i know we get we get hot and humid uh during july and august so an animal like what we're seeing with these Mashona cross can just handle that. They, it doesn't seem to bother them at all. It's, it's quite remarkable. Uh, and, and the other aspect is, you know, from the, from the land improvement, soil improvement, uh, aspect, we know that, uh, managed grazing of some kind, whatever you prefer to do, we have seen the very best improvement with non-selective grazing and we aim to graze non-selectively uh as much of the year as possible sometimes really wet conditions uh we have to back that off so we don't pug the ground up sometimes extremely hot conditions because if you'll take a look around here we got a lot of uh, areas that's not a lot of shade we got some shade around the perimeter and we usually uh if it gets real when it gets hot you know we offer the cattle the chance to to walk back over to some perimeter shade which kind of brings me to the second part of this, uh, another reason why adapted genetics are so important. So if we have to offer these cows shade, they will go out and graze, they'll get their bellies full. They'll walk back to wherever they're accessing that shade at, they lay down, ruminate, and then they get up and they uh, urinate and uh, poop and then they go back out and graze. So you get uh, nutrient relocation, nutrient transfer. They go out there, they eat all the forage. They, you know, the forage is full of uh, nutrients that need to be returned to the soil in the area they're grazing. So they can't do that if they can't stay out there once they get their bellies full, ruminate and uh, recycle those nutrients right there where it was grazed from so when it gets hot our, our straight british bred cattle we have to offer them shade so they go out they eat they get full they haul all that fertilizer over to the tree line and that's where they deposit it so we get nutrient transfer we're actually uh moving nutrients out of our grassland into the edge of the woods and and i know everybody's probably seen uh pastures that have trees in them uh that over time the trees just die and, and fall down because nutrient transfer. So the, the cattle actually overload the nutrients around those individual trees a lot of times that's out in a pasture uh, because they're seeking shade. So they, they go out, graze, they stand around that tree and over several years of doing this, the tree just can't cope with the increase in the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium all and it kills the tree. So very important we are seeing tremendous tremendous improvement with our uh, mashona influenced calves we will uh going forward we we will not have all of our calves will be a percentage mashona influence uh 50 is our goal right now that's where we're seeing the best we we will possibly have some uh, 25 percent mashona calves uh in this spring calving we will kind of assess them and see what they're doing but we feel like uh 50 is going to be what works best for us so uh hope everybody has a fantastic day as always you can check us out online at runningtbeef.com you can like us on facebook at running tea beef if you're watching on youtube uh, please be sure and click that like and subscribe button on your way out and everybody have a fantastic day.